what up guys bass drop keys your friendly neighborhood negro and a rookie mycologist i want to welcome you all to my brand new mushroom youtube channel all this channel is is one person's journey to try to teach themselves how to grow mushrooms in today's video what i'm going to do is i'm going to inoculate this all-in-one mushroom grow bag the first thing that i'm doing is i'm cleaning my work area with 70% isopurple alcohol. The reason why you wanna use 70% and not a stronger one is because the stronger ones will evaporate off of the surface too fast. With the 70%, it stays on long enough so that we can actually clean everything and make everything sterile or disinfected. With the all-in-one mushroom bags, you can actually colonize your mycelium. And then when that is complete, you can actually fruit your mushrooms right in this bag if you want to, or you can put it in a mono tub or however you want to do it. But with this all in one grow bag, you can do everything right inside this bag if you want to. I figured since this is my first time doing it, that this will be a good place to start. If you want to use the same all in one grow bag that I'm using, I'll put the link in the description for you. What I'm doing now to make sure we don't get any contamination is I'm taking the isopurple alcohol and I'm spraying it on a paper towel and I'm cleaning the injection port on the bag and the bag. I'm also wiping down the syringe itself, the needle pack, and I have some micro pore tape right there. It's very important that you make sure that everything is as clean as can be. Now for this video, I'm not using a steel air box, but I will be making one on the channel. Also, I will be getting a flow hood, but I figured since this is the very first piece of content that I'm doing, it's best to show you my growth. So this first video is no steel air box, no flow hood, just using the isopurple to make sure everything is disinfected. Now right there, what you saw me do is you saw me shake up the syringe. What I have here is a spore syringe. Now you can use a liquid culture if you want to. It will actually colonize faster if you use a liquid culture, but I'm using a spore syringe this time. Sometimes in the spore syringe, you can see that the spores are clumped up inside the syringe. And what you wanna do is you just wanna shake it vigorously that way it'll unclump for you. So that's why you saw me shaking up the syringe to make sure all the spores were unclumped. Right here, what you see me doing is, you see me putting on the needle. There's always gonna be a sterile needle that comes with each syringe whenever you purchase it. And you saw the way that I put the needle on the syringe. I made sure that I didn't even touch the cap at all. Whenever you open up the needle, it's gonna be sterile. So the first time that you use it, you don't have to worry about flame torching it or anything like that. You can see that I punctured the injection port and I put all 10 cc's inside the injection port. I put it in one spot. Now I know a lot of you probably when you inoculate your grain, you probably put your liquid culture or your spore syringe in different places through the injection port. I got this grow bag through mushroom supplies and in their instructions, they said to put all your liquid culture or your spore syringe in one place so that way the reproductive cells are near each other. It's their grow bag, so I'm gonna follow their instructions. Once I inject all 10 C's inside the bag, I'm gonna put the safety cap back on it to make sure I don't puncture myself by accident. Then I'm gonna put micro pore tape over the injection port to make sure no contamination gets in that little hole we just made. Now, while we're waiting for the mycelium to start growing, they recommend putting the bag someplace that is in between 70 and 78 degrees Fahrenheit that gets no direct sunlight. You also want to put it somewhere that's at least waist height. So that way you don't have any contaminants or anything from the floor messing with your growth. All right, guys, so it's 45 days later. I inoculated the grow bag on October the 16th. This footage was taken yesterday, November the 30th. If you look on the calendar, you'll see that that's exactly 45 days. So the first thing I always do before I handle the bags in any way is I put on my gloves and I spray them down with the 70% ISO alcohol. So as we're looking at the bag, you can see that we do have mycelium growing inside of here. The thing that's really being tested right now is should you or should you not shake up your grain bag or if you're using an all in one bag like you see right here should you come and do the break and shake technique so that way your grain will colonize faster and we can get to growing mushrooms a lot faster if you've been watching this channel then you see me do the uncle ben tech on this channel 
with the Uncle Ben tech, I inoculated the rice. It went 15 days. I did the break and shake, or, you know, because it's in a bag, a squish and mix. Once I broke up the mycelium and mixed it with the rest of the rice, it only took nine days for the rest of the rice to colonize. So right there was my proof that if you break up the mycelium when it's 20 to 30% colonized, it will colonize the rest of your grain or whatever you're using a lot faster. And so if you look at the all-in-one bag, you can see that we do have mycelium growing in here. It's been 45 days. I inoculated this with spores and not liquid culture. So it is gonna take longer. But in 45 days, I thought we'd be further along. Now I can already hear the question that you guys are gonna be asking me, yo keys, where did you get the spores from? Well, I don't know how YouTube feels about that. So let me take this time to invite you guys to my Instagram. If you come follow me on Instagram at the rookie mycologist, I will give you six sites that I've already ordered from that I know 100% is legit and any kind of spores that you're looking for, whether it's medicinal or gourmet, they have them right there available for you. Also, what I'll do is I'll put my link tree in the description box. You can also find my link tree link in the bio on Instagram. If you click the link, you'll see my favorite place to get them and the place that I recommend the most. So what I'm doing today is I'm breaking up the mycelium inside the all-in-one grow bag and I'm gonna make sure that everything inside of here is mixed well. What we're doing is we're creating a lot more inoculation points and so that's gonna make the mycelium colonize this bag faster. And obviously I don't have to say that the faster the bag colonizes, the faster we can put it in the fruiting conditions, the faster we're gonna have our mushrooms. As you guys know, I'm brand new to growing mushrooms, but with the limited knowledge that I do have, I will be doing a break and shake on all of my grows going forward. So now you can see that I have everything broke up well inside the bag and mixed together well. I did wipe down the bag one more time with the 70% ISO alcohol. Also, I wrote on the label what day I did the shake on. I'm doing that on all the bags. That way it's easier to keep track of everything that I'm doing because as you can see, I got a lot of things going on inside my incubation box. What you're looking at right now is I'm giving you guys a shot of my incubation box, which you guys know is a tent for me. You can see that we have a lot of things in here that's already colonized and ready to go. The rice is up top. You see the colonized grain that we have right there. They're ready to spawn the bulk. I'm gonna be doing that in the next couple of days right here. And right here is our all-in-one grow bag. So obviously you guys can see by what I have inside this tent that the all-in-one grow bag is not 100% colonized. This is day 79 since I inoculated the bag. And honestly, I'm tired of waiting on it to fully colonize. You know, there can be a lot of different reasons why some will colonize faster than others. The first one is I did use spores. So spores automatically are gonna take longer than liquid culture. Secondly, it could be strain dependent as well. Some strains take longer than some strains. Thirdly is the environment. The temperature that you're doing for your incubation can play a big part in it going faster or slower than normal. So there's a lot of different reasons why some may go faster than others. At any rate, even though it's not 100% white like the other ones that you see inside the tent, I do believe that it's colonized enough that we can start fruiting. So what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna show you how easy it is to put your all-in-one grow bag in the fruiting conditions. As always, before I start handling the bags or doing anything, I always spray 70% ISO alcohol on my hands. I then spray the ISO on some paper towels or napkins, and I wipe down any of the tools or anything that I'm gonna be using. In this case, I'm just gonna be using a pair of scissors, so I'm gonna wipe them down. And then what you wanna do is you wanna wipe down the top portion of your all-in-one grow bag. Remember, you can never be too clean when we're working with our mushrooms. Once you have that done, it's really easy to put the bag in the fruiting conditions. All you wanna do is you wanna cut a slit on each side of the bags right underneath the seal. That way we're adding that great airflow to the bag. That condensation and the moisture inside the bag is gonna start evaporating along with that fresh air exchange. And that is what induces your pins on your fruiting block. Once you have the slits on both sides of the bag, you just wanna pull the bag up and down just to billow some air inside the bag and start the process. Once you do that, you're gonna put it wherever you're fruiting it, whether it's inside your incubation boxes, that's where you're doing your fruiting. 
me i actually have a tent which i'm using as a fruiting chamber so everything that's starting to fruit i'm putting it inside this tent i'm going to leave the all-in-one grow bag in here and in seven to ten days i should see some mushrooms start growing we'll see fingers crossed all right so let's fast forward four days it's now january the 7th and you can see that we have a lot more mushroom pins inside of this bag this is my first time doing a mushroom bag as you guys know and so the amount of little pins in here is just really tripping me out this mushroom bag seems to have more mushrooms growing than the monotub grow that you guys just seen the uncle ben's tech but that could be for a lot of reasons it could be strain dependent meaning that different strains are going to grow differently also just like everything else that grows the environment has a lot to do with how they grow how much yield you're going to get and so forth the main thing that i want to show you with this footage is there's a lot of pins that's forming inside the bag and i'm getting excited to see what this is going to produce all right guys so let's fast forward five days it's now january the 12th and while we're looking at this footage let me tell you what's going through my mind I'm noticing obviously that we're having more and more growth on these mushrooms, but what I'm thinking is a lot of the mushrooms are on the sides right here, side pins. And because of that, they're not gonna have any room to grow because they're gonna be pushing up against the bag. One thing that I could have done that I didn't is I could have put a rubber band along the middle portion of the bag. So that way the bag will be resting against the substrate and that would force the pins to be on the top. But since I didn't do that, and I need to rectify the problem of these side pins are gonna grow fast and they need room to grow, I decided that I'm gonna use the tub tick. And basically what that means is, instead of fruiting inside of the bag, I'm gonna move this inside of a mono tub and let it fruit there. That way it'll have more room and the mushrooms won't be getting squished by trying to grow against this bag. So what I decided to use for this is I'm going to use another one of the Max Shield bins that I have. As usual, before I start working with this, I'm going to spray 70% ISO alcohol on my gloves. I'm also going to use the 70% ISO to clean the Max Shield bin, the liner, the lid, and the scissors that I'm going to be using for this. All I'm going to do once I have everything cleaned is I'm going to take some perlite that I have and I'm gonna pour it in the bottom of the liner. Once I do that, I have some reverse osmosis water right here. I'm sure that you probably can use distilled water or tap water as well. I happen to have some RO water right here, so that's what I'm using. But anyway, you're gonna pour some water onto your perlite, and then once you do that, I'm just moving the perlite around just to try to get water on all the perlite. Once that's done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of aluminum foil and put it on top very nice this is looking very nice and now that we have that done our chamber is set up and ready to go the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to take the all-in-one bag here it is right here and of course i wiped it down with the 70 percent iso alcohol once i have that done i set it down and i'm going to cut the bag open once i cut the bag open i'm going to cut it around the bottom so that way it'll be easier for me to slide the bottom of the bag out I couldn't just pour it out of the top because we have these pins on top of the substrate right now. So I need to cut the bag out instead. So as you can see, I'm cutting close to the bottom of the bag all around it. And then once I have that done, I'm just gonna peel the bottom off and put the substrate right on top of the aluminum foil. You can see that a corner of the substrate got caught in the bag. So all I did is I just took that part of the substrate and put it right next to the big one. Now that I have that done, let's take a look at these mushrooms and see exactly what we're working with. It was hard to see everything clearly through the bag, but now that it's out of the bag, let's check it out. Oh man, look at this. These mushrooms look super cool. <laughs> man, that's so crazy. I'm trying to tell you guys, anybody that's watching this and you're interested in mushrooms, you definitely should grow them. Watching things grow for me is very common helps me think better. I don't know, it's just something about watching things grow that really connects with me. I'm sure some of you guys out there can understand what I'm talking about. But at any rate, we have the all-in-one grow bag transferred over to our max yield bin. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Flarisol bottle and I'm gonna spray the walls of the monotub. Also, I'm gonna spray inside of the lid. 
I do want to mention when it comes to the Max Yield bin itself, I do have the black micro pour tape covering the holes at the bottom of the Max Yield bin on the black part. On the lid, I do have the self adhesive filters covering all the holes on the top, which is going to allow that fresh air to pass through. But now that we have everything done, I'm just going to put it back in the rack right inside the fruiting chamber and give it some time. So now it's a day later, January the 13th, and I wanna look at the changes in the mushrooms over the next couple of hours. So the footage that you're looking at right now is from 9.51 a.m., check it out. And this footage is from 6.40 p.m. You can now see that on that big mushroom, the veil has already torn. So right now would be a perfect time to harvest that mushroom also, as I'm looking at the other mushrooms around it, I can see that on a lot of them, the veils have just torn or is just about to tear. So honestly, right here would have been a great time to harvest the mushrooms, but I don't have time right at this particular moment. I was actually trimming up some plants right now because I have a video due with one of my sponsors, but I decided just to poke my head in here and look at the mushrooms and this is what I found. So I know right now that I'm gonna have to come in here and do the harvest very soon, as soon as I finish trimming. I also know that I wanna try to take a spore print for the first time, so I need to hurry up and get this trimming done so I can do the harvest and take the spore print and do everything that I need to do. Okay, so now it's January 14th, it's 4 a.m. and I just got finished taking my spore prints. You'll probably see that on the video tomorrow. But at any rate, I'm about to do the harvest. You can tell now that it's gonna be a late harvest for some of these. The biggest one that's in here, you can see that it's already started splitting and it's reaching up toward the light. The ones that's right next to it, on the left hand side, you can see that they're already starting to split the caps. So it's important that I go ahead and harvest these mushrooms so that way they don't get ruined. So that's what we're gonna do. Right here, you can see the stems from the mushrooms that I already harvested. I used the caps to do the spore prints. If you watched the video from my first flush, then you know that I use two different methods in order to harvest the mushrooms. Number one is the twist and pull, where you just grab the mushroom by the base, twist it a little bit and pull it, and it'll come right out. The next one is you take your scalpel or scissors, you cut it at the base and you harvest it that way. This harvest was different than my last one. There's a lot more mushrooms right here and there's a lot more smaller mushrooms. So it was a little more work than the first flush but I'm really loving this because I'm gaining so much experience with different types of mushrooms. But now that you know the methods that I'm using to harvest the mushrooms, give me one second and let me get this done. Add a my nutrients, check the pH. It's the grow house. I got me some OG and growing grip, babe. Welcome to the grow house. I bought me some seeds and I'm growing organic. In the grow house. Only three months to harvest, you think it was magic. Welcome to the grow house. Add a my nutrients, check the pH. I ain't trusting you suckers cause most of you hate. I got me some OG and growing grip, babe. If you not a grower, you cannot relate. I bought me some seeds and I'm growing organic. Take a hit of my head, should be high as a plant. Only three months to harvest, you think it was magic. You dead, gotta grow as we growing fantastic. Four for a bloom booster, black strap molasses. They grow like so bright that I need me some glasses. I'm loving this cannabis, growing my passion. Yes, I'll be growing till I hit the cash. I bought me some seeds and I'm growing organic. Take a hit of my head, should be high as a plant. Only three months to harvest, you think it was magic. You dead, gotta grow as we grow up fantastic. I'm working these crops and they think I'm Hispanic. I'm loving this cannabis, I'm so romantic. I grow it and sell it, I do my mathematics. I grow it outside of my place, are gigantic. I'm not fulfill it, but feel it fanatic. I got me some cocoa, I'm adding some cash. I grew it, I got me some beauty, and I'm blasting. I hit it, it's fire, it tastes good, I'm laughing. Roll me a J, I ain't doing no Zenix. I pull 50 P's and I you in a panic. I grow it and ship it, I flip it gymnastic. You try to take from me, I'm killing you, bastard. But back to the story, don't mean to be graphic. I'm pressing this rosin, that bit on ceramic. I grow in the basement, I grow in the attic. I look at my flowers, I'm feeling this static. I'm growing this broccoli, growing this cabbage. I grow it, I trim it, I clear it, I pack. I'm smoking this gas, and you won't catch me slack. I ship off a package and email the track. You need to shop with me, ain't doing no tax. You say this ain't gas, but you hating, you capping. I don't trust you lames, you telling them right. I got me a grow house, so fire, I'm having. I'm adding my nutrients, check the pH. I ain't trusting you suckers, cause most of you hate. I got me some OG and growing grip, bait. If you not a grower, you cannot relate. I bought me some seeds, and I'm growing organic. Get hit in my head, should be high as a plant. Only three months to harvest, you think it was magic. You dead, gotta grow as we grow fantastic. I'm adding my nutrients, check the pH. I ain't trusting you suckers, cause most of you hate. I got me some OG and growing grip, bait. If you not a grower, you cannot relate. I bought me some seeds, and I'm growing organic. Take a hit in my head, should be high as a plant. Only three months to harvest, you think it was magic. You dead, gotta grow as we grow fantastic. I'm adding my nutrients, check the pH. 
All right, guys, so as you can see, I got the harvest done. Check out the mushrooms. Don't they look cool? Now, all I did was with my flare saw bottle, I sprayed the walls and the lid again. I put the lid back on the tub and close it up. You can see that I left pins on top of there and hopefully they'll grow. And in a day or two, I'll be able to have another harvest. But now that I got that done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse off or wash my mushrooms. All I'm doing is I'm just rinsing the mushrooms with cold water. That's it. I also want to say this too. In my first flush video, I had not a lot, but maybe three or four comments of people saying, yo, don't wash your mushrooms. What are you doing? Don't wash your mushrooms. Hey guys, if you don't want to wash yours, don't. But I'm going to wash mine. I know that I grew this in a manure based substrate. And so if you don't want to wash yours, that's your prerogative. I'm going to wash mine. But anyway, I got them all washed and now I'm going to put them in the dehydrator. I could use this dehydrator because these mushrooms are small and there's not a lot of room in between the racks on this dehydrator. But because these mushrooms are so small, it fits perfectly. So I set my dehydrator for seven hours at 158 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the highest temperature setting on this dehydrator. So it's been seven hours and our mushrooms are all dry now. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna find out what the dry weight is for our latest harvest. So you can see I have a jar here in my scale. I'm just gonna put the dry mushrooms inside the jar. Now that I have that done, I don't know if you guys can see the scale, but it says 25.9 grams. I also dehydrated the two caps that I used to do my spore prints. After I put the caps in there, it was 26.5 grams. So I'm just gonna say 26 grams. That is the total dry weight for my first flush with the all-in-one mushroom bag. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I'm very satisfied with this first flush. And as a reminder, if you haven't been watching since the beginning of the series, I did use a multi-spore syringe in order to start this all-in-one mushroom bag. What I've done to make it easier for everybody to follow along is I've created different playlists here on the channel. So if you wanna follow each different growth that I got going here on the channel, just come over to the playlist section and you can see all the videos pertaining to that particular growth. Now, before I get out of here, you guys have probably noticed the sweet shirt that I'm wearing. This is the Rookie All Over shirt. If you wanna support me and the channel, come over to the merch website, therookiemycologist.com. I have some great shirt designs, mugs, hoodies, slides, stickers, and I'm adding new stuff all the time. Also, if you're feeling my logo, I will put the artist that did it in the description box. You can hit them up and get one for yourself. I really appreciate you watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys the next time. Rookie out.